I was just thinking to myself, I was like, you know, this is gonna suck. <laughs> it's 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 lifelong. I'm not I'm not gonna ever not have it. It's it's gonna be brand new. It's my life has changed like forever. I want to say around like like so like track season ish. Like we would do the workouts and I just couldn't do them. I couldn't perform them. She and I used to watch TV together at night, and we'd sit here in the living room and. She would had a jug of water that she would fill up, and she would drink it, like, I mean, guzzle it. Well, it started in late February 2020, right before the pandemic. Courtney, just like she always had, was going through track practices. We had gone to a couple of meets, and she just wasn't right. Every time I Googled her symptoms, diabetes came up. Um, she was complaining a little bit about being thirsty, cramping up a lot, things just weren't right. I had run my 100 hurdles and I just, like, it was awful. It, like, I, it, it was just bad. Like, my steps and my time was just not, like, it was awful. And so then Coach Tyron was like, listen, you're not running again until I see a clean blood test because right. something's definitely wrong. March 5th came and so I had been to the doctor twice. And I got a call from the nurse practitioner. She goes, Jay, I don't want you to freak out or anything, but uh, Courtney's blood sugar levels are extremely high. It, quite, it could be a false positive. Likely it's not. You need to go get her right now up at the Sanger meet and, um, and bring her to Cook's Children down in Fort Worth. And then my dad calls me and he's like, you know, your blood test's back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Like, what's wrong? And I was like, I was so excited that finally I was gonna, I was gonna hear like what, what was wrong. And he was like, well, we have to go to the hospital to run some more tests. And she was, you know, in the hospital bed, in a gown. And at this point, this is when I'm scared. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm literally being admitted into the hospital right now, so it's not just something they're gonna give me and I'm gonna leave, like, I'm staying here. So I was like, what is going on? And the doctor comes in and he's talking to whatever, he's talking to me. And I remember his last few words, he was like, yada, 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 and he was like, and this is really common in type one diabetics. And I looked at him and I was like, wait, I'm diabetic. There was no testing for diabetes or anything like that. They legitimately had already diagnosed her. Um, I was, I remember, I remember just like sitting, just staring at the wall and just tears were just like, and they, there was a nurse trying to talk to me and I just didn't even like, she, it was like she wasn't even there. And Courtney broke down. It was a very, very hard, difficult time. I can either take this as like something horrible that happened to me and like I'm a victim or I can take it and I can be a better person because of it. I can, I can, that I knew that there was a reason. I was like, this didn't just happen to me. Like there's, there's something coming. There's something bigger coming. So this is a bag that Bella, my friend Bella got me cause she's type one and she, uh, she has the same one. Cause they kind of told me in the hospital, you know, you kind of have to have like a go bag with everything in it. Something to make it easier just to grab and go. So this is mine. So this is my meter. These are called test strips, which is what the blood goes into. Like that. I typically use my ringer middle finger just because they're the easiest. Pull this back, hair click, and that means it's ready. Put it on, and and you're supposed to put it in this part right here. So five, four, three, two, one, and then it'll tell me. When I, so I have a Dexcom, which is this, so I can pull out my blood sugars on my phone. If I like feel low, but it's not saying I'm low, I'm gonna trust my body, I'm gonna check it. It's my bag. So then summer happened, and then came senior year, and at this point, I was doing a lot better. Then track season came, and of course, I was just a nervous wreck. So I remember my first day coming back to practice. I had my blue bag. I didn't even have my backpack yet. Like I had my blue bag like packed full of stuff, and I remember I was so happy to be back on the track. Like, oh, it's like it's like my home. And so I got. It was like our first day of 300 practice, and I got on my blocks. <laughs> I was just so scared. It wasn't even like. It wasn't even a full, like, it was, it, I was just so scared to get out, get back out there and run, and it felt strangely good. <laughs> um, I got back down to like my normal times, but, and so, senior year, um, oh, it's crazy. I started, I started running better times, and I knew PR, a personal record of best, uh, I think it was 49.2, and um, that, that for me was so like, heartwarming and fulfilling because like it's like wow like one year ago today I was in a hospital bed. Having the unknown become known was something extremely helpful for her progress afterwards. And then at that point 
after I realized, I was like, wow, I still like, I still have this. I have more in me. I have more left. Like that's when the goal was the record. And uh, and once the district track week started, like that's when I got important. She got better all the time. I mean, every single meet up through regional, she was breaking record after record after record. Finals of area in Springtown, I broke I broke the record. Um, oh God, I just remember like, because I, I was so far out and like on the home stretch, I was just, I couldn't help myself. I kept looking at the board because it had the time on it, but I just knew, I just like, I was like, I can't look, like, I can't look. And I was just running and I remember I was going so fast, <laughs> I was flying. Her senior year, she was getting better and better. So she was breaking records every single week. This is district and I just, I've been PRing every meet. Ran a 49-2 I got a 46-3. I can't believe I just PR. I have PR'd every meet. Yeah. That doesn't happen. And I got a 46-06. But, but I beat the school record again, which was my old best time. Coming for those 45s in Austin. I gotta, I gotta get it. So. Qualifying for state in, in 4A is an unbelievable accomplishment. Well, her attitude's always been the same. Ever since she's been a freshman, she's been a go-getter. I cannot believe I just did that. I just, she's I know. She's a beast. <laughs> she's a beast. <laughs> you too. I just, I knew it was either now or never. Like, I, I just can't believe it. Like, I feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> it's crazy. It was a goal for me, something that I didn't ever think I could do. Even when I was a freshman, I was like, wow, that's so far away. Like, I don't know if I'll ever get there. And then after that happened, after I got diagnosed, um, huh, I didn't ever think I was going to get there. And then after it finally happened, I was like, no one's ever going to take that away from me like I did that. And I came back from that.